ketoconazole shampoo is a type of antifungal medication that's frequently used for treating dandruff, but it can also be used for treating a whole bunch of other fungal infections. I really love ketoconazole shampoo for treating male pattern hair loss because there is some high quality evidence to suggest that this product is in fact efficacious at preventing progression of male pattern hair loss. In this video, further down the line, I'm gonna be summarizing all of this evidence for you guys, so just stay tuned for that. Um, I also really like ketoconazole shampoo for a couple other reasons as well. First reason, this medication is incredibly safe. It has an exquisite safety profile. Millions of individuals have used topical ketoconazole products for decades and decades and decades without having any issues. This is really the only drug that I've ever seen with um, no side effects that exceed greater than 1% in clinical trials. Very, very impressive. Never seen this before. Um, pretty much no one has issues with ketoconazole shampoo from a safety standpoint. The next thing I love about ketoconazole shampoo is that it's relatively inexpensive. At least in Canada, it's about $20 a bottle and a bottle is gonna last you a couple months. I also like that it is pretty convenient to use. You you only really need to use it two to four times per week and the way that you use it is you wet your hair you apply the shampoo to your scalp you know really lather it in wait for about five to ten minutes and then rinse it out afterwards so pretty convenient to use i also really like it because it's really easy to obtain you don't need a prescription you can just buy it over the counter and lastly i love ketoconazole shampoo because this is a pharmaceutical product it has very high quality control, and you know that every time you purchase a bottle of Nizerol shampoo, you're getting the exact same formulation that has been tested for safety and efficacy in treating dandruff, but that's besides the point. So aside from these things, what people are really, really interested in when it comes to ketoconazole shampoo is, is this treatment effective? Is it gonna work at preventing progression of male pattern hair loss? So. Let's talk about a systematic review that was done by Fields and colleagues. Quick review when it comes to interpreting medical evidence, um, you can organize evidence into a hierarchy. At the top of the hierarchy, you have your systematic reviews, you've got your randomized control trials, you have your meta-analyses, and then at the bottom of the hierarchy, you have your animal studies, you've got your cell studies, you've got your case reports. This systematic review, top of the hierarchy, very high quality of, of evidence. However, the randomized control trials that were studied in this uh, systematic review were not the highest quality randomized control trials. I'm not going to uh, lie and say that it has, you know, just as good evidence as, you know, finasteride or something like minoxidil, but there is some pretty good evidence to support the efficacy of this product. So let's delve right into that. Fields and colleagues, like I said, systematic review, couple different animal studies that I'm not going to talk about because um, I really don't think you can use results from animal studies to uh, make clinical decisions. So we're not going to talk about those studies. Human studies, first human study, I'm not going to talk about that either. I don't think it's a very good study. Um, second human study, let's talk about that. Six participants treated with ketoconazole shampoo um, with male pattern hair loss. What did they find? They found that three of the individuals had improvements in terms of hair outcomes and three individuals did not have improvements. Problems with this study, small sample size, no control group. Next study, this study was done in 100 participants. They were divided into three different groups. One group was given minoxidil monotherapy. Second group was provided with oral finasteride monotherapy. Third group was provided with finasteride plus minoxidil. And fourth group was provided with finasteride plus ketoconazole shampoo. They found that the individuals with the best hair outcomes were individuals, not surprisingly, um, given the finasteride plus minoxidil. And they also found that individuals given finasteride plus ketoconazole also had some of the best hair outcomes. So both of these groups were tied for first place. Um, finasteride monotherapy was in second place and not surprisingly, minoxidil monotherapy was in last place. 
This study suggests that ketoconazole shampoo with finasteride is better than finasteride by itself and is just as efficacious as finasteride plus uh, minoxidil, which is, as we already know, finasteride plus minoxidil is an incredibly efficacious hair loss regimen. So, you know, it kind of suggests that ketoconazole might be just as effective as minoxidil when you add it onto finasteride. Problems with this study, only 10 participants in the ketoconazole group would have been really nice to see like 20 or 30 participants in this group. Um, another issue, ketoconazole shampoo was only studied in the context of an add-on treatment to finasteride. It would have been really nice to see a group that was only provided with ketoconazole shampoo, so that is another limitation. Does ketoconazole shampoo work by itself? We don't really know based on the results from this study. The next study that was done, we had 39 participants divided into two different groups. So two thirds of them were given uh, ketoconazole shampoo, one third of them were given a placebo shampoo. What did they find in terms of hair outcomes? Well, they found that individuals given the ketoconazole shampoo had better hair outcomes than individuals with the placebo shampoo. They measured the hair outcomes in this study by the thickness of the hair and the numbers of hairs in the antigen growth phase. And they found an increase in these hair parameters in individuals using ketoconazole shampoo, and they found a steady decline in these parameters in individuals given the placebo shampoo, which is what we would expect given the natural progression of male pattern hair loss. The next study was done in eight participants divided into two different groups. One group was given minoxidil. The second group was given ketoconazole shampoo. They found that both of these groups had the same level of improvements in terms of hair parameters. They found improvements in hair density. They also found improvements in terms of hair diameter. So again, it looks like in this study, ketoconazole is just as effective as minoxidil. However, there were only eight participants in the study. The next study that I'm gonna talk about is a little bit of a downer. This study was done in 150 participants with both male pattern hair loss and also dandruff at the same time. And in this study, they divided participants into three different groups, given either ketoconazole shampoo or zinc shampoo, and then they also had another type of antifungal shampoo as well. What did they find? Well, they found that individuals provided with the ketoconazole shampoo had improvements in terms of hair diameters, they had improvements in terms of the number of hairs in the antigen growth phase. However, they did not see improvements in terms of hair density. And then lastly, I wanna quickly talk about a study. This one was done in women, so female pattern hair loss, which is a little bit different than male pattern hair loss. So you can't really apply these results to men, but in this study, they compared minoxidil to ketoconazole shampoo. And just like the last couple studies that I've talked about, they found that minoxidil was not inferior to ketoconazole shampoo when it came to uh, hair outcomes, right? So this again points to the fact that ketoconazole shampoo is perhaps just as effective as minoxidil when it comes to um, improving hair growth. So those are the studies I wanted to talk about. Um, just some of my own personal opinions about ketoconazole shampoo. Again, great safety profile, very inexpensive, easy to obtain, good quality control, and you know a high quality pharmaceutical product, possibly efficacious at preventing progression of male pattern hair loss and improving hair growth. Is it something that can replace uh, something like finasteride or dutasteride? Probably not. I wouldn't really recommend ketoconazole by itself unless you actually cannot tolerate finasteride and minoxidil. However, I do think that ketoconazole has a place. I think it's a good potential adjunct for individuals looking for some extra, you know, punch in their hair loss regimen. I also think it's a really excellent choice for individuals who experience both male pattern hair loss and dandruff as well. We know that dandruff is an inflammatory scalp condition. We know that dandruff can occasionally exacerbate male pattern hair loss and lead to um, hair loss itself. So using something like a ketoconazole shampoo, which is going to kill the fungus that causes dandruff, might be an effective treatment for these individuals who experience 
uh, dandruff, and then all they also experience male pattern hair loss as well. And I, I actually fall into this category. Um, I get really bad dandruff. So currently I use ketoconazole shampoo about once every two weeks. Um, I don't think the frequency that I use is high enough to be considered a um, as a hair loss drug in my regimen, but I do use it to keep my dandruff at bay. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but in order to use ketoconazole shampoo like the individuals in the studies use ketoconazole shampoo, I would re recommend using it but at least twice per week because um, that's essentially what's been studied in the majority of these uh, hair loss studies. So this video, longer video, maybe a little bit confusing. I hope you could follow along. Um, recently, I've been, you know, I so I'm trying to make these videos a little bit more frequently. Uh, I just graduated from pharmacy school at uh, the University of Toronto, and I'm kind of in this middle period between um, finishing pharmacy school and starting uh, to work as a pharmacist. And during this interim, I've been trying to, you know, get some traveling out of the way as COVID restrictions permit, obviously. Uh, but, you know, just during this period, I've been kind of busy with trying to travel, trying to um, do all of these things before I start working full time. And that's kind of been why I haven't really been able to keep up making these high quality videos all the time. We'll see how it goes, but I just thought I'd let you guys know about that. Because the hair loss videos have been doing so well, I'm probably going to be focused on uh, making more hair loss videos in the foreseeable future. For individuals who've, um, you know, really enjoyed my antidepressant videos, I still want to continue making antidepressant videos. I'd love to have like a playlist of like 50 different antidepressant reviews. I think that'd be awesome. And, um, you know, in the future, hopefully I can find the time to do this. But for now, I think hair loss is what people are interested in. So we talked about um, finasteride side effects. Uh, we talked, I actually made a video all the way, you know, way back when, where I kind of talked about both finasteride and minoxidil. It's like one of my first videos. Um, so I've talked about that. I've talked about finasteride side effects. I've talked about topical finasteride. I've talked about um, minoxidil. I've now I've talked about ketoconazole shampoo. So other things that people have suggested that I talk about would be, you know, derma rolling. I want to talk about that. Topical dutasteride. I want to talk about that. Topical anti-androgen uh, products. I'd like to talk about that as well. You know, just other um, hair loss topics as well. I really want to cover. So if you guys have watched all the way to the end, I've listened to all of my ramblings. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for all of the positivity that I've seen in my comment section so far. And I want to thank you for, you know, taking the time to watch these videos. These videos are very long. They're in depth and uh, they're a lot more popular than I expected, to be honest. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.